Yo yo yo, Jamel here. This is part two of a series in which I take a look at cancelled games from one of my favorite consoles of all time, the Nintendo 64. But before we get started, I want to say that I will link all of my sources in the description, and most of this information is archived beautifully by Unseen64 on Unseen64.com. But if you'd rather not read and want some dude on the internet to tell you about these lost games, you've come to the right place. Please drop a like on the video, subscribe, and click that notification bell so you'll be alerted every time I drop one of these videos, which will be about every other week. Alright, now that's all out of the way, this week we are going to look at 5 amazing cancelled games for the Nintendo 64 and the Nintendo 64 DD. Let's go. Klepto was a game planned for the Nintendo 64 by Utopia Technologies in the late 90s that focused on objectively the coolest mechanic in video games, the grappling hook. Taking inspiration from the 2D grappling hook platformer series, Umihara Kawase, programmer Atman Binstock wanted to create a 3D, third-person, stealth platformer game for the Nintendo 64 that could take advantage of physics-based grappling hooks. The player would have been faced with missions in a sci-fi world in which they were a thief that had to acquire a target item by either sneaking in unnoticed by enemies or full-on guns blazing. The choice would have been up to the player. Though no gameplay footage or playable content of the game has been found to date, art director and level designer Gary Corvo said of the demo their team took to Space World 1999, quote, there were a decent number of prototype levels that I built showcasing the various mechanics. The environments were simple, but we had some really nice interaction-driven animations on the characters thanks to Atman's hard work. The rope itself was also very cool. He connected a string of rigid cubes with springs and then skinned the whole thing. The player could then control the tension of the rope by loosening and tightening the springs on demand. You could shoot your bungee cord grappling hook and swing around the environments, or hook onto enemies and so forth. You could attach rocket to your hook and smash enemies around the level with it." End quote. Unfortunately, as the Nintendo 64 was close to being on its way out around the time Klepto was making its way into the minds of the developers at Utopia Technologies, finding a publisher was just not feasible at the time. Though Nintendo did actually like the concept, and even encouraged the team to bring their game to the GameCube, Utopia Technologies just didn't have the budget needed to develop Klepto for the next-gen console. Vampire Circus was a game planned in 1996 for debut on the Nintendo 64 by Z2 Game Design Studio, a video game development company founded by brothers John and Stay Pickford. The concept had similarities to the then popular Gauntlet series, though instead of four player controlled characters, Vampire Circus allowed one player to control five characters by switching between them in real time, and instead of a fantasy setting, it would have been centered around zombies and vampires. The game planned to take advantage of some form of permadeath in that any of the five playable characters could die and then no longer be playable. Though the team was pretty far along in the prototype phase for the game, Z2 would soon be acquired by Infograms, and their focus would be shifted to games under the Warner Brothers license. The team went on to develop the PAL exclusive title, Taz Express, and Vampire Circus would never see the light of day. Thornado was a title under development by Factor 5 sometime around 1998. Factor 5 had built their gaming notoriety with their successful run-and-gun franchise, Turrican. Originally released for the Commodore 64, they hoped to bring the concept into the 3D realm with a spiritual successor developed for Nintendo 64-bit console. The design of the game involved third-person shooting and puzzle solving that spanned across eight levels and gave the player the option to play as male or female. According to Unseen64, an early prototype build of the game was developed but would never see the light of day due to the team becoming busy with work on Star Wars Rogue Squadron. Factor 5 didn't give up on the idea just yet though. Even after canceling the title for the Nintendo 64, they attempted to bring their Turk and spiritual successor to the GameCube, but in the end, it too was canceled. As a fan of the TV series Lost, the cancellation of Imagineer's N64 DD game Desert Island really makes me sad. Though there is very little to show of this game besides early prototype screenshots, the concept seemed to be quite promising. Similar to Lost, the players would be stranded on an island and would be mainly tasked with surviving. 
but the complexity of the game would have been found in its life simulation aspect. The island would have been host to a variety of creatures and plant life that would all follow a chain of evolution that could be utilized by the player to build sustainability. Obviously, this mechanic is abundant in the gaming world today, but at the time, this was a pretty out there idea. Sadly, the game never made its way into the hands of gamers due to the failure of Nintendo's 64DD console. This game may need a video of its own in the future, but for now, I want to take a look at the cancelled but recently dumped online Dinosaur Planet. In the timeline that we live in, Dinosaur Planet went on to become Star Fox Adventures on the GameCube thanks to Nintendo wanting to slap some Star Fox paint on a completed game developed by Rare. But before GameCube's Star Fox Adventures came to be, Dinosaur Planet was actually meant to be Rare's final game released on the N64 and followed the story of two playable protagonists, Crystal and Saber, the latter of which would be turned into Fox McCloud in Star Fox Adventures. Though the N64 game had similarities with its eventual GameCube release, much of the game saw changes, such as the loss of Crystal's staff weapon at the beginning of the game, the characters speaking Dino language, the initial reasoning for Crystal boarding General Skell's ship to rescue the Queen Cloudrunner's daughter, Ut neokratu, ui kimo nekt. I'm dead kutsuho kei porigoi. I'm edko kutsuho rosvejo evu tashkov zuk. And so much more. We could have had a completely intact new IP, but instead we got a shoddily thrown together Star Fox game that makes absolutely no sense in the Star Fox IP. But now that we have access to the late build of the original Dinosaur Planet, thanks to Forest of Illusion on Twitter, which you can find a link to in the description of this video, we can finally experience the game the way Rare initially intended. But it is still a cancelled game that is not 100% fully playable at the moment, so it deserves its spot on my list.